the Toyota Kioff Evaporative Emission System. In this two-part video series, we're going to take a look at what the system is for, how it works, and how we monitor or test the system. First of all, what is the system for? Well, when we refuel our fuel tanks, there is evaporative emissions that reside in the void of the fuel tank. As the level of fuel goes up, those evaporative emissions need to go somewhere. So we collect them by those evaporative emissions going through this line right here, referred to as the vent line. They are then collected in the charcoal canister. The charcoal canister has a carbon substrate that is meant to absorb those hydrocarbons or, or evaporated fuel and save them until we're ready to purge them. It is purged by this valve right here, controlled by the ECM. So as the engine is running, the ECM turns this valve on and the intake manifold negative pressure puts a negative pressure on the canister itself and it allows for those hydrocarbons to be removed safely without getting into the atmosphere. So when it comes to this system, it needs to be tested. So connected to the charcoal canister is what's referred to as the canister pump module. Inside this pump module is a leak detection pump that is going to create a negative pressure in the, in the system when it is time to be tested. We also have the canister pressure sensor. This is going to be the input into the ECM as to what the negative pressure is. Now government regulation says that we cannot have more than a 20 thousandths leak in this system. So that's what this 20 thousandths reference orifice is for. And then we have the vent valve. The vent valve is meant to close the system off to retain a negative pressure for testing purposes. Now, both in refueling and also in testing, we need fresh air from the atmosphere. That's what the purpose of the fresh air line. There's a filter that brings fresh air into the pump module, which allows them to be there for testing and also allows for a way for fresh air to enter the canister during the purge process. Okay, so let's take a look at some important things that we need to know about the system before we get going into its monitor. Like I mentioned, its purpose is to go ahead and collect fuel, primarily during the refueling process. We know that government regulates that we can only have a 20 thousandths leak in this. That is a very small diameter, by the way. It's about this, the width of a small T-pin. Then, as mentioned, the ECM monitors this system by leak checking with a negative pressure. That, leak, that negative pressure is provided by that leak detection pump and of course is monitored by the pressure sensor. Now, this monitor does not run while the engine is running. It is the key off system. So this monitor run by the ECM runs after five hours after the vehicle's been sitting. We can force the monitor to run, however, with a tech stream utility. Now we can do both an automatic test and a manual test. And in our video sequence here, we are going to take a look at both the automatic and the manual test. And then, like mentioned before, for testing purposes, the vent valve is a normally open valve. And also, for the system, the purge valve is a normally closed valve. Since the ECM monitors this system with the key off, TechStream provides a way for us to do an automatic test of the entire system. If we were to run that test and then graph it, it would look just like this. And the monitor consists of six different steps. Let's take a look at them right now. Step one, the ECM simply wakes up and checks to see what atmospheric pressure is. Here it can see the pressure and it records that. Step two, the ECM turns on the leak detection pump. At this point, the leak detection pump will draw a negative pressure as it sucks air through the 20 thousandths reference orifice. 
Here, the ECM now knows atmospheric pressure as well as what the pressure is for a 20,000 leak. So going on to step number three, the pump remains on and the ECM closes the vent valve. Now the negative pressure that the detection pump is providing is introduced into the entire system. As it draws the system down, it is going to be looking for a couple of different things. First of all, if there is no leak in the system, our negative pressure will drop below what we saw on our 20 thousandths leak. In this example, we can see that it dropped below that pressure. So therefore, this system does not have a leak. After the leak check, the system now does step number four. With that negative pressure in the system, it opens the purge valve, a normally closed valve, and all of that negative pressure is released into the intake manifold. Remember, the engine is not running at this point, so there's nothing but atmospheric pressure in the intake manifold. In this step, this is where the ECM makes judgment on whether there is a stuck closed, possibly a restriction, or anything of that nature in the purge line itself. And like I said, since it's, the ECM is looking for the pressure to equalize to atmospheric pressure, if it does not, it will set a DTC for purge flow. Step 5. The vent valve opens, the purge valve closes, and the leak detection bump draws a negative pressure through the 20 thousandths reference orifice for a second time, just to make sure that our pressure in step number two remain the same. Last but not least, step number six. The ECM takes a look with a second atmospheric check. The leak detection pump shuts off, and the system allows pressure to equalize making sure that atmospheric pressure remained the same. Now here's the beautiful thing about this monitor is that from this graph I can tell both if there's a leak in the system and also if there's component failures. Take a look at this example. Here we have a test, step one, atmospheric check, step two, our 20 thousandths reference leak. So this way I know that my pump is working. Right here, my vent valve turned on, so I know my vent valve is working. And now, if you take a look at the pressure that was drawn, it is nowhere near that 20 thousandths leak detection pressure. Therefore, this system has a leak. Not only does this system have a leak, but if you look at step number four, as the purge valve opened up, look at the very short rise to atmospheric pressure that it had. The system could very well cause a purge flow DTC from this as well. Does this necessarily mean that the purge valve is bad? No, not at all. It's just based on the fact that step number four was such a small rise in pressure. Here we have an example of a failed monitor due to a component problem. So looking at our steps one through six, First of all, here's the atmospheric check. No problem there. Step two, the leak detection pump turns on and it get, provides for us a pressure that as it goes is drawn through a 20 thousandths reference orifice. Step three, the vent valve closes and we come back up to atmospheric pressure as it starts to draw a negative pressure in the entire system. And then as it draws down, did it drop below our 20 thousandths pressure? Sure did. Therefore, there is not a leak in this system. However, when we get to step number four, look what happens. At this point, it should have returned back to atmospheric pressure as soon as that purge valve uh, opened up. But in this case, the pump shut off, it opened the purge valve, and it did nothing as far as re returning back to atmospheric pressure. In this situation, I either have a defective purge flow valve that is stuck closed or I possibly have a restriction in the system. Okay let's get started on this test. So I'm going to click on utility 
to get to the evaporative emissions system test. There it is right there. Click on that and the first thing it's going to do is show us the atmospheric pressure in millimeters Hg absolute. Now when we start the test it will give us gauge. Remember gauge is always zero when it comes to atmospheric pressure. Okay, here, I'm going to make sure that this box is checked so it saves the data, and then look at the automatic test and hit next. A couple more things to read through, and then in 10 seconds, the test will begin. So, we will see our gauge pressure at this point, and then we will see the status of our valves. Now, there's gauge, reading zero. Our purge valve is closed or off. Our vent valve is open or off, and the vacuum pump is off. Once the system is done, done testing, you'll get this dialog box, where it asks you to save the data. Be sure to click OK. Now it's saved as data one. Then from there, I'm going to hit exit. It's going to ask you if I, you want to save it to the computer. In this case, I'm going to hit cancel. And let's exit to see if we have DTCs. Okay, so we have two DTCs, one for a large leak, a P0455, and we have a purge flow DTC. Okay, and they're both pending because we completed the monitor. Now let's check out our graph. I'm going to click on stored data. Look for that labeled data one under the engine tab. Click on that. Now I'm going to take one of these pressures, it doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to graph it. I like doing the gauge one because it actually gives me both positive and negative pressures over atmospheric. And there we go, there's our graph. Step one looks good, atmospheric pressure. I know the pump turned on, which gave us our negative pressure for a 20 thousandths leak reference. And it looks like we're about negative 26 millimeters Hg. Take a look at step number three. I know the vent val valve operated, but I didn't draw it into a negative pressure at all. Not only that, but it looks like step number four, where the purge valve opened up and returned to atmospheric pressure, is completely gone. Now, due to this large leak, that's a very good possibility. That's why we have a purge flow DDC as well. Here in this example, everywhere that you see in dark gray is the potential area for leak. So where could my problem be? It could be in the canister. It could be in this vent line. It could be in the tank or in the purge line itself. 